Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. City leaders recently met for a strategic discussion on housing and neighborhood revitalization policies. Items discussed included plans to reduce the number of houses in disrepair, abandoned houses, and vacant lots. Our neighborhoods are the housing is an asset of the city. It may at times be privately known, but it's an asset of the city. And the question of whether the city should invest in it um, answers itself. If we don't invest in our city, if our lots are vacant, our houses are vacant, well then we don't collect any property tax. So the question of whether or not we commit general purpose funds or general fund revenues or city revenue outside of what the federal government gives us is really a question and answer itself. If we don't do that, we lose money. We lose city revenue. The city will convert several key downtown streets from one-way to two-way streets this month to help drivers more effectively navigate downtown Kansas City. The following streets are scheduled for the conversion. Walnut Street between Truman Road and 20th Street, 14th Street between Broadway Boulevard and Wyandotte Street, and Walnut Street between 5th Street and 12th. Please check the city's website at kcmo.org for updates regarding these street conversions. The city's Rich Knoll Paysetter Award Review Board has awarded Assistant Division Chief Paul Pakowski of the Fire Department with an April Paysetter Award for his compassion and dedication to public service. Um, I feel very, very proud to be a part of the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department, and I'm going to do my best to serve the citizens of Kansas City to the best of my ability. Uh, several people I want to recognize first is my wife. She's my peer as well as my best friend. So, um, Chief Berardi is incredible. His leadership, his guidance has really, I think, taken our department. He's got, he's, he's so innovative with his ideas and whatnot, and I think he's really going to take us where we need to go and make us some trend centers for other departments to look at, and I feel very, very honored to work for him. Uh, it comes down to my boss, Deputy Chief Grote. Besides being a super, super close friend, uh, I don't think I could be the chief officer I am today without his guidance and leadership. Uh, he's just incredible, and I look at him every day for leadership, but more than anything else, he's my mentor and uh, just a very, very dear friend and would like to also thank my daughter for being here and my mom for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to tell you about some upcoming events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. Thousands of area students will converge at Bartle Hall for the 9th Annual I Build Construction Career Day on April 30th. Formerly known as Crayons to CAD, the event showcases heavy equipment and other technology so middle school and high school teens can explore career tracks in construction, including engineering, architecture, contracting, and the skilled trades. Plan the wedding of your dreams at the area's largest wedding planning show, being held downtown at the Kansas City Convention Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, May 5th. There in the Grand Ballroom, the Engaged Summer Bridal Show will feature more than 150 experts to help you plan the perfect wedding. For more information, call 816-229-9333. Chihuahua Parade is another fun downtown event happening on Sunday, May 5th at Barney Alice Plaza. All kinds of dressed up dogs are welcome at this noontime procession that hopes to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most dogs in costume. A $5 entry fee per dog helps local animal shelters. 
visit kcdogparade.com for more information. Fans of science fiction and fantasy can view original artwork, listen to panel discussions, and shop at a three-day celebration called Spectrum Fantastic Art Live 2 from May 17th to 19th at Bartle Hall. From Friday night's opening party through Sunday afternoon, visitors can mingle with hundreds of talented artists at this unique event. Register and buy tickets at SpectrumFantasticArt.com. To learn about more events taking place at Kansas City's convention and entertainment facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Hi, I'm Mayor Sly James, and this is my good friend Shirley here. Shirley really wants to go home, but even though our city is so pet friendly, going out and walking around with your pets is a great way to socialize and to bring neighborhoods together. We have nearly a quarter of a million cats and dogs in our city, but only about 23,000 of them are licensed. That's only 9%. Licensing your pet will ensure that if your pet is lost and found, it'll be returned to you instead of taken to the shelter. A one-year pet license is only $10 and a three-year pet license is just $27. There are three ways to license your pet. You can visit the city's animal shelter at 4400 Raytown Road, or you can contact your vet and he or she may be able to sell you a pet license directly. Or you can visit Pet Data online at www.petdata.com. For more information and a list of participating vets and other licensing related questions, Visit the Animal Health and Public Safety Division's webpage at kcmo.org slash animal. I know my home wouldn't be the same without our two canine family members, and it's a small price to pay for all the joy you can get in return. So please keep a license on your pet at all times. And remember, all funds generated from license sales go towards improving the care and treatment of animals at the shelter. So for myself and my good friend Shirley here, have a great day. Make sure that your pet is licensed every day. Thank you. I'm Major Jim Prudy, Commander of the Traffic Division for the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. The City of Kansas City recently passed a new seatbelt ordinance with the goal of increasing seatbelt usage on Kansas City streets and reducing the number of fatality and serious injury vehiculars. The ordinance will result in a change in the way seatbelt enforcement is conducted in Kansas City. The new ordinance elevates Kansas City seatbelt law from what was considered a secondary to a primary law. That means that a Kansas City police officer can now stop a vehicle if the officer observes that either the driver or any front seat passenger of the vehicle is not wearing a seatbelt. Each unbuckled occupant can then be issued a citation that carries a fine of $50. Why was this change made? Because we've reached a point in Kansas City where educating vehicle occupants on the benefits of wearing a seatbelt and voluntary compliance with a secondary seatbelt law are no longer effective in significantly increasing seatbelt usage or bridging the gap between our seatbelt usage of 79% and the national average of 86%. That point is most evident in the fact that in Kansas City last year, 68% of the victims of a fatality accident in a passenger vehicle were not wearing seatbelts. Many of these lives could have been saved. This tragic loss of life and the increased incurrence of serious injury from not wearing a seatbelt is an unnecessary consequence of driving or being a passenger in a motor vehicle. For drivers and front seat passengers, seatbelts reduce the risk of death by 45% and cut the risk of serious injury by 50%. Wearing a seatbelt is not a personal choice issue. It's a safety issue. It's a common sense issue. And it's the law. Seatbelts save lives. So buckle up, Kansas City, and arrive alive. Looking ahead, the city's Rebuild KC Neighborhood Mini Grant Program will accept grant applications from May 1st to June 28th. Rebuild KC will award grants up to $2,000 to registered neighborhoods whose projects foster partnerships and build upon existing assets. For more information or to apply, visit kcmo.org slash neigh. 
Residents are invited to the city's quarterly Neighborhood Leaders Roundtable meeting at the Northland Neighborhoods Office at 4420 Northeast Shoto Traffic Way on Thursday, May 9th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Presentations will feature the city's new open data catalog, the Northland Motel Task Force, targeted code enforcement efforts, and an update to the Wynwood Project. For more information on this meeting, please call Tiffany Drummer at 816-513-3210. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.